Computers are delicate and potentially dangerous pieces of electrical equipment. Do not try to open them without adult supervision. Welcome back to my computer lab! Today we'll be talking about something that will be hard to forget. <laughs> memory! Computers have several types of memory, just like humans. Firstly, there's RAM. And I'm not talking about male sheep. You definitely shouldn't put them in a computer. <laughs> no, I'm talking about random access memory, which is where computers store the data that their processors need immediate access to. It's their short-term memory. Then there are storage drives like hard drives. These act as your computer's long-term memory, holding on to your important data for hopefully as long as you need it. But computers need RAM because it's super fast at reading and writing data. For a rough comparison, a standard hard drive could read and write over 3,000 books at the same time in about five seconds, while RAM would do it in the blink of an eye. Processors and RAM are like best friends in constant communication with each other, which is why RAM always sits right next to their processors, directly connected. Oh, they're, they're inseparable. Without the high speed of RAM, CPUs and GPUs wouldn't get information fast enough and would sit idle, wasting precious potential computing power. Now, unlike humans, computers don't store their memories as wishy-washy recollections. Instead, they use bits, which you may remember is short for binary digit, or ones and zeros. Everything stored on computer memory is broken down into these bits or chunks of them. For example, a single letter or number would be stored as a series of bits that the computer can interpret and read back later. In the early days of computing, people used holes in cardboard, known as punch cards, to store their information and programs. <gasps> Talk about bits of paper, eh? Eh? One thing almost everyone is familiar with in computing language are bytes. Gigabytes, megabytes, and so on. From how many gigabytes of storage a new phone will have to how many megabytes each picture of your cat will fill up. But how exactly do those itsy bitsy bits of data fit into all those gigabytes? Well, eight bits make up a byte. 1,024 bytes make a kilobyte. 1,024 kilobytes is a megabyte, while 1,024 megabytes make a gigabyte, and so on. So you can store over a billion bits in a single gigabyte. <laughs> oh, but I think that's enough for today. Next time, we'll take a look at some advanced computing fun, like overclocking and cooling. <laughs> And remember, next time you use a computer, don't forget to appreciate all the billions of bits it keeps in its memory. Just for you. Ah!